Hey guys, Persistent Programmer over here, and today we're going to do another Lee code problem, Jewels and Stones. So first, let's understand what the problem statement is. So the problem is asking um, us to find the frequency. So we need to output a number here, and the frequency that we need to find is how many times, if we're given a string j, and j is equal to a capital and um, small letter a so these are um, these two strings are treated separately because uh, they are in different cases so that's okay and we're given um, another string value which has which could have one or more of these values so if we get a a a then we need to return three because this a occurred in this other string three times. So that's essentially what the problem is asking. Okay, now let's discuss some strategies we can use to solve this problem. So the first solution that comes to mind is a brute force approach where we iterate through all the elements in S. So in this case, we would be over here at A and ask, oh, is this A in J? And if yes, we just increment our total. So total plus plus. So we'll just add to our total here, right? So that is um, one way of looking at this problem. And what would happen is we would have a outer for loop with S. So we'll iterate through all the elements in S and then an inner for loop for all the elements in J. And this way, we can match all the characters. So for each of the S, we will go to first character of J and then second character of J, and then continue this way um, to get our total count. So this solution is a little bit slower because for each item, we need to uh, visit all the items in J and then count our total. So the time complexity for this solution would be s times j, so the length of s times j. And the space complexity is 1, because we're not using any auxiliary space. Now let's discuss um, an approach of how to optimize the time here. Great, so to optimize the solution, the data structure that we can think of implementing is a set. And the reason this would be more efficient is because um, the lookup time in a set is O of 1. So we can directly access each of the items in the set. So if we had a set here and we wanted to check, oh, does this um, A... So we would put the elements of J in the set. So if we had a set of J and if we wanted to access this element a, um, we have direct constant time access to each of the elements in the set. And that's what makes this algorithm faster if we use a set. So let's walk through this example. So if we have a A here in our J, all we need to do is iterate through our S and just check, it. does this exist in the set? So if it exists in the set, then we just add to our total. So did you see how by using a set, we reduced our time complexity since we are able to access each element in O of one time. However, our space complexity is higher for this case because uh, we are storing all the elements of J in a auxiliary space. So that's why our time complexity is uh, going to be higher compared to the previous time complexity where we didn't need any additional space to store our items. So to review the solution, we need to create a set to check against um, all the elements. And then what we need to do is iterate through um, all items in S. And if it is in the set, we just add to our total frequency. So we can see that in our optimized solution, our time complexity is reduced to S plus J. And that's because we need to put all our J elements into the set. And then we will send each element in S 
and check if that element exists in the set or not. And since the lookup time is O of 1, um, this reduces our time complexity to O of S plus J. So that's what our optimized time complexity is for this problem. Okay, if all of this makes sense, then we're ready to jump into the code. Great, so I'm back in leak code and I will be solving this problem in Python. So the first thing we need to do is create our set. So we can call it check j and we can say equals set and we will insert all the elements in j here. The next thing we need to do is set our total to zero and this is how we will initialize our total and increment it if we find it in j. So now we need to iterate over each item in our s string. So we can say for st in s, so each string in s. And we need to say if st in check j, then all we need to do is increment our total. So total plus equals one. And that's it, and return return our total. Return total. Okay. So let's see if this works. Let's run code. Okay, finished. And submit. Awesome, accepted. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. All right, happy coding, guys.